Uh, during your, uh, your opening statements, uh, I think each of you discussed the, the, the product development process uh, at uh, these companies, and we've talked uh, at length about that process through the hearing. Uh, Mr. Boland, though, you, you discussed how Facebook does not uh, incentivize limiting uh, the spread of harmful content, but of course prioritizes growth and, and, and revenue. So could you tell the committee generally what, what metrics inform employee compensation uh, at, the, at the company? What, what goes into that? Um, so uh, employees at, at Facebook, you, you kind of receive two, it's about rewards, right? And so the rewards that you receive is your cash compensation, your stock compensation, then promotions. And generally, if you're building products, you're rewarded on the success of that product. And that product success is defined by some set of metrics around uh, whether that product is being used more. So let's pretend uh, that you're building a video product. The things that you'll care about are the metrics around uh, what are the total watch hours, so how many hours are being spent watching videos, how many, uh, what's the user growth, how many people are, are using that, that uh, video product, where does that spread geograph geographically, et cetera. You're incentivized on those hard metrics, and then you're not uh, incentivized around, well, what kind of content are you growing your video with? What's the stuff underneath the hood that's, that's showing up, that's driving this growth? That's not your problem, that's somebody else's problem. Now, there may be company-wide goals where they say, okay, for the company, we're gonna, uh, I wasn't aware of any sort of safety or trust goals, but they could theoretically create one. The problem is that doesn't drive individual behavior. Company goals are kind of there. You don't think about them. You think about what you individually and your team are gold to deliver. That is always metrics. Uh, that's always product growth metrics and success metrics of the product and not success in uh, are we keeping people safe. There, there's not a trust and safety metric. Uh, for the trust and safety team, uh, you, actually, they've been, my understanding is they've been uh, disbanded and, and um, moved into a, a central team. Um, I did not experience uh, products like video or others mm -hmm. carrying a metric that, that was incentivizing trust or safety. That's not there. Sir Redder, was that the case as well? Yes, I agree with all of that. There's that promotion system, compensation system, review system. The problem with trust and safety metrics, typically companies may have, they'll have five top level goals, let's say, and maybe one of them is trust and safety. The problem is that, that is at that odds with the other metrics and the other metrics always win. And if I am an engineer building, say, a new live streaming video surface, if I launch that product and it gets some usage, that is a feather in my cap. That's something I can say that I did. I can point to its effect. That will help me with promotions, compensation, career advancement. If at the last minute I decide not to launch that, launch that product because I realize I can't control some of the safety aspects and we shouldn't do it if we, can't, if we can't do it without certain safeguards, I get zero credit for that. It's as if I've done nothing for the company over the last X months. So in that incentive structure. So you're, you're in effect, you'll be punished and, and your future advancement will probably uh, be uh, questionable as well. It's, this, it's no different as you know, a product that I build and then I don't launch because it might not be safe is no different than if I just didn't show up to work right. in terms of the future credit that I get. Not a good place for an employee to be. Correct. Not a good place, and you can you can change uh, you can change incentives, and you can change the way that people show up. Not even just through goals, but through process. So, uh, there was an example where when Facebook started as a desktop site and moved to mobile, uh, Mark Zuckerberg required that all products that were that were demoed to him in their demonstration, that they had designs around that. He kicked the first team out that came in without that design, and suddenly everybody was thinking about mobile designs. If in your process you created an incentive where you said, let's, dis let's as part of every product design discussion is what are all the harmful ways this product can drive hate or drive extremism or drive uh, polarization, you would have a radical change in the way that people showed up to those meetings and, and in the process thought about the negative impacts of their product. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Mr. Bowen, before you left, it, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that you voiced objections about how Facebook recommendation algorithms were actually promoting extreme, hateful, and racist contact. Is, is that correct? That, that's correct. My, my concerns were specifically around racist content. So, so what was the reaction from your senior leadership uh, within Facebook when you express these concerns? Um, it's disappointing. So I, I, I uh, raised the issues, particularly around the distribution of, of racist content that I was seeing in the CrowdTangle tool and, and my concerns that we didn't understand it um, and brought forward three steps that I felt would be very uh, good internal steps to actually help, help mitigate the problem. 
one, uh, more internal researchers, two, more data to external researchers, and three, beefing up CrowdTangle to share more information. Um, you know, I had a range of responses from uh, you're wrong and that that's not the case, uh, that, that uh, this is driving us with no evidence, mind you, just uh, I believe you're wrong um, and no counter evidence uh, to some, uh, you know, yeah, th this might be a problem, but, but not something that we're working on right now. But when you say no evidence uh, on those statements is that you're wrong, uh, you work for a company that looks at a lot of data and makes decisions based on data, but this is something they wanted to ignore, basically. Yeah, so a, a particularly concerning moment for me was when, when, I, when I had my moment where I, I really came to terms with believing that the product could be causing harm. I started to look at, at a variety of, of uh, things that research teams were doing internally to understand what they were seeing. And the internal dialogue and the internal um, uh, documents, many of uh, which Francis Haugen has shared, um, uh, were troubling. There, there was a particular um, document that was an overview of polarization research from, I think, June of 2020. And that talked about political polarization. And one of the lines said, we have not researched in, and have very little understanding of racial, ethnic, or religious polarization. Um, that underinvestment um, was significantly concerning to me. Yeah. Mr. Radar, one, one of the documents submitted by a Twitter whistleblower to the SEC last month was a, a 2021 study that he commissioned uh, of the site integrity team's uh, capabilities. The study found that Twitter planned to launch a new product, Fleets, just weeks before the 2020 elections. The integrity team, according to that, that document, I'm quoting the document, said, quote, had to beg the product team not to launch before the election because they did not have the resources or capabilities to take action on misinformation or disinformation on the new product, unquote. The report also found, quote, while product teams do elicit feedback for new product launches, product managers are incentivized to ship products as quickly as possible and thus are willing to accept security risk, end of quote. Are these findings consistent uh, with the pattern of decision making that, uh, that you saw? So with the caveat that that specific example ha happened after I was there and I can't speak to it, that's absolutely consistent. In fact, I would be surprised given the incentives at play if the product team had done anything else. Uh, one way we used to talk about product managers is they're quote unquote the mini CEOs of their product and they get consultation from other teams, trust and safety, legal, finance, compliance, but it's their decision to launch or not. And again, there is no possible credit or reward from not launching, whereas there's possibly a credit or reward from launching. And because that they probably had more confidence that it would at least get some usage and potentially drive revenue, there's every reason to launch and not worry about the other issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ray Commander Portman, 